Hi, it's Tom here from FDS and today we are going to look at this which is the First Order Stormtrooper Deluxe Blaster and uh, this is an older blaster now and I've got to say thank you to JMO for sending me one of these and uh, these may well be on clearance in different places as the uh, Han Solo stuff has rolled through and uh, I didn't think anybody had given these much love so I quite like this blaster a lot of people don't like it because its stock performance is frankly atrocious but I wasn't interested in that anyway. So today we're gonna to look at how to mod this. Uh, it retains fully the light and sound functions uh, like all my Star Wars mods so that you can run around being a stormtrooper shouting pew 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 or let the gun do the pew pew pewing for you whilst you wildly miss anyone who looks even vaguely heroic. And I've had a lot of fun with this blaster um, as you'll see when I come to do some testing and things. Uh, it's appeared in a couple of uh, Bristol Blast videos as well. If you can spot me, um, I'm the guy in the stormtrooper costume. First things first, the first mod you'll need to do is you'll need to make this barrel attachment here removable, otherwise it stays in there and it's really annoying. So what you do is you, using a hobby knife or using whatever abrasive you prefer, you take this entire lip off the back of the big orange tip. That means you can have a shorter faux barrel if you like, or if you want to have it on for the full on effect, you can obviously put it on like that. And that just makes it more removable and it's easier to work with. Now. I've already loosened the screws on this, so hopefully the shell will open. Uh, the first thing about this blaster is that there is a lot going on inside the shell. Now, um, what I've done is I've done some modifications to the battery tray area, and I've done a few modifications to the internal plastic structure in order to make this battery tray viable. Otherwise, you have a very small tray, and there are no tray expanders for this. Okay, so when you've opened it up, uh, don't undo the shell screws. Take this part off, and then unscrew the, sh the, sh the sound PCB. It's mounted on two posts, I think and uh, you'll need to do that before you open it. I'm trying to fit everything in is the hardest part of this build. Uh, there's an awful lot of stuff to fit in there and there's very limited room. It looks big, but actually it's only really this area of the blaster that you have to play with. So I'm gonna run you through the parts of the wiring loom that you retain. And what I did is I separated the loom just like I did in my other build. Here, first of all, is the sound circuit, right? That's the sound and lighting control circuit. And just like in my other Star Wars builds, you're looking for the two powers ins and out, uh, two power ins. And then on the other side, these are the outs. So there's the switch control and then there's the outs. So what you're going to retain from the sound circuit is all the circuitry on the sandy colored side. And then on the green side, on the underside, you just want the positive and the negative from that. Okay. And um, we're going to use those, just cut a little stub off so that everything else stays in there. You want to keep the speaker in there. You want to keep the wires in there to the barrel lighting. And then over here, you can see if I just lift the trigger out the way, you'll be able to see a bit better what's going on back here. Now, this is a MOSFET build. There's no way around this if you want to retain the light and sound and you don't want to be a peasant. Um, this is by far the best way of doing it is to use a FET. So, as you can see, there's a few other things going on now in this area. So this is really one of the only options with the wire run. And here are these two yellow wires and the gray wire. And there's the gray wire is the speaker, which is back up here. And then the yellow wires is this one here, which is the pew pew activation sound. And then the uh, red wire down here and the white wire down here, those two are from the um, rev trigger. So what I've done is I've sighted my MOSFET up here. Now this is on one of the incredibly rare BSUK MOSFET boards that they had made. It's one of the pre-production ones that they had made at the factory and I had one left. Now if you're doing this without the board, which you're gonna be because you can't get it. Now there is room in that space for a FET, a 10K resistor over the top of the FET and the flyback diode just I checked and you can fit it in there. I use this because it's cool as and I wanted to use it in something interesting. And this was an interesting blaster. So FET goes up here. FET connections exactly the same as on the Jin Erso or the Cassian Andor that I made. And you can see that I've used the original trigger wiring, which is the white wire and the red wire from down here for the rev. They go up to the FET. They go on the usual connections on the FET. You can check those on my FET, on my FET builds. And there's no difference there. And again, this is now a separate circuit. So this is only connected to the soundboard, right? The rev trigger is not connected to the soundboard at all. The rev trigger is now connected only to the FET. Then here comes the high gains. So you've got the high output from the FET, um, which is this big negative here. And then there's a positive that comes back down here. Now it gets complicated in a minute because you can see here that I used um, Dean's connectors for my motor block. So it's removable like all my builds. And here is the LED wiring. Now this gets really tight. 
what I've done is I've added a resistor there and the LED wiring runs off of the jam door switch which is located here. So underneath that is the jam door switch and I ran the positive feed for the LEDs through the jam door switch out and then it splits into two and I've just reused this existing feed here. That's only for the LEDs in the glow section that charge the darts. The other LEDs on the barrel are controlled still from the, from the board. And then the, then the neutral for those two sections is just the stock neutral. It just runs in its usual spot. It doesn't do anything fancy. But as you can see, it's very difficult to get around this screw port and you can only just fit the plug in for the motor block. If you're not going to be really, really conscientious, you can just fit it in um, without this plug. There's a bit more room. Now, underneath here, this is why it's really hard to film. Here's the LiPo plug and I've done, you can see I've cut the whole tray base out. So you need to cut that out completely so that you remove the base of the tray and that leaves you room in here. Now you can fit a big 1000 3S LiPo if you want. Um, you can fit a really nice hybrid LiPo in there. Um, they'll, they'll fit and I'll show you how that works in a minute when I've put it back together. Now when you set the motor blocks up, obviously there's a lot of glue on these, um, make sure the wires dip down a little bit and don't be tempted to through wire the block. You have to T-wire the block because there's not much space on top of the cans. And you can also see down here You've got to go either side of this screw port. That's really critical. So once all of that is in there, the other thing to remember is that when you want to set up the power supply to this, this is the last thing I usually do, is that I've put a feed off here. There's a feed off of this uh, power wire. And just here in the top of this section is one of those tiny little um, buck jumper power supplies. And that is set to 5 volts. And I've put that right down in. I did that before I did the motor block. And, and well, I'm not going to lift the block out now, but it's just there. And what you do is you unscrew the motor block and then you bond that um, to this top face. Okay? If it comes loose, obviously the wiring can touch the flywheels and then it will just burn through your power wires. So you don't want that. And that's about the only place I could fit it where there was room. And then obviously the outputs from that set the output voltage to 5 volts. Just like in my Cassian Andor video. Do it properly with a voltmeter, double check it, and then this means that you can now keep plugging in whatever LiPo you like. This will run on 2S, 3S, um, quite happily to change the power. So if I go to a 100 FPS event, I can run it on a 2S and I get a nice low power. If I want a little bit more, I can get 110 out of it on 3S. Um, you can just whack a 3S in and it will shoot all day. So that's where the power supply goes. Now I'm going to cover the very last thing, which is how you fix the soundboard in place to keep it out the way of the LiPo. So I'm going to put the top of the shell on. And then I'll show you. Here's how we've done the battery tray. Cut the back off, which I've shown you earlier. And then what I've done is, the next sneaky thing you need to do is you need to cut down. There is a little post, which I'm going to try and expose for you. It's really hard to see because there's very little room in there. So the post is just here. So I'll zoom in on that. And you trim that down just to above the little side bolsters. And what that means is you can take your soundboard you can see I put a silver screw through the other hole in the end of the soundboard. It's just one of those ones you get spare when you take out locks. And then you can put your soundboard and you can screw the soundboard back down like that. And then that keeps it out the way, nice and secure, and stops it getting in the way of your LiPo. And then you can fit your LiPo in here. Actually, there's quite a lot of room. You can't go very long because otherwise the soundboard gets in the way, but you can because you've cut the base out here. You've got all this room back here too into the handle so you can fit a decent sized pack in there and I'll just show you the pack going in. Okay so here's one of my favourite packs, a 1000 mAh bolt and this is capable of a 60C to 120C burst and uh, it's a nice little pack, good capacity and relatively small and not too thick. Uh, this will fit in a strife with a tray expander and uh, what we do is plug it in and you can see the, the little LEDs have come on and then if you listen you'll be able to hear the pew pew. Right, yes, and So that all works. And now the performance figures for this are based on the stock mot on the uh, on Rhino motors and the stock wheels. And I'll do a separate test um, for the other ones if people want it. So make your comments. Now, if you want to see the wiring diagram for this, um, I'll put a link to it in the description box. I'll also put a link to my Cassian Andor video. I recognise this isn't a terribly complete mod guide, but look, there you go. Goes in there. Cable goes in there. Now there is room if you're a lipophobic type of person to run. A, a little thing in there, a little alarm, which I very rarely do. You just don't need them if the battery's right. And then you can see, all fits in, 
Obviously I've left the orange part off the battery tray for the time being, but that now all fits in nice. And you can see, works, good flush fit on the battery tray, nice and secure, not gonna fall out. And just to prove that it works on 2S, I'll put 2S in as well. So switch straight to 2S, because the buck jumper's intelligent, it recognizes the voltage has changed. There's even more room in there with a the 2S pack. You could probably go on a bigger capacity with that. So all rocking. And that is the walkthrough. And uh, now I've got to hand it over to my tame stormtrooper. Some say he's only mortally afraid of teddy bears and rebels. But uh, we just know him as the stig trooper. Do you see any rebels? Are you going to hit the target today? What battery voltage? 2S. Are you ready for 3S? Have you had a very good look around for teddy bears with sharp sticks? No teddy bears. And now we're going to um, review the Star Wars Stormtrooper Blaster. And this is 2S uh, with Neo Rhino motors and stock wheels and stock cage. So you have a high of 98, low of 68, average of 91, stream spread of 30, standard deviation of 6. Now we're going to have a look at Neo Rhinos on 3S, which is what they're meant to run at. And uh, that is with stock wheels and cage again. So that's a high of 107, low of 93, average of 100 dead, extreme spread of 14, standard deviation of 3.